Hello and welcome to the Donahue Group. We're so glad you could join us. Um, we're here for a half an hour of scintillating conversation and opinions about uh, issues in the state of Wisconsin. We hope you'll find things that are interesting to listen to. Joining me, the Director of Assessment and Curriculum <laughs> for Social Studies. I got a promotion for the, the last right. episode. The different jobs. Coordinator, the I'm sorry. I'm not a coordinator. Um, whatever he is of social studies, and I'm going to give up now, a humble social studies teacher, Professor Tom Paneski, math professor at UW Sheboygan, former state senator Cal Potter, all around bon vivant. I'm Mary Lynn Donahue, practicing law here, and uh, we, uh, we have a lot of interesting things to talk about at the state level, I think. It's, it's been an interesting season. We're all into elections around here. The only election that's going on on April 3rd, please don't forget to vote. Uh, is that for uh, Supreme Court Justice. Uh, Linda Clifford is uh, squaring off in many ways against um, Judge Annette Ziegler. So I should say Attorney Clifford and Judge Ziegler are, are uh, running a spirited race for the, um, for the court. Uh, Justice uh, John Wilcox is retiring. He's certainly a part of the uh, conservative core, I think, of the, um, of the Supreme Court. No matter who wins, there'll be a majority of women on the uh, on the Supreme Court, which is uh, oh. is very interesting, considering that there are relatively few, really, really few women judges at all levels in in the state of Wisconsin. So here you have the there Supreme is. Court with with four women of all different uh, is the pay political stripes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, how do we count, how do you account for that? I you just know, my clever way of leading into the question of how do you account for that? Boy, am I not touching that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to really? move right along. No, I mean, really, why? Might why, be an interesting analysis. An interesting analysis why, why the Are position is attracting in male. male dominated law firms? Or? Yeah, or is it just that males aren't interested in the seat or the campaigning has become it doesn't so. doesn't pay enough that they're making first, all the bucks and the women aren't? Yeah. Huh. First of all, I think that um, uh, even though women make up half the graduating classes of most law schools, and even okay. when I graduated from law school almost 30 years ago, that was the case. Um, women practice uh, at a much lower percentage just in the, in the general practice of law. It's one of those professions that does not graciously let you work part-time very easily. Um, and the and, type of law they practice is probably and, and, different. Yeah, I mean, it's an extremely demanding job, so if you want to have a family, uh, putting those two things together really mm -hmm. is, is quite a challenge. And um, so you have fewer women practicing. Um, Sheboygan County, I counted it up because I had a party for women lawyers, we're actually up to 25 or 26 lawyers, women lawyers in the county, which is an extraordinarily high number for the first 20 or so years I was here was about four or five. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's, that's been a, a, a bit of a growth. Out of how many lawyers are there in the county? Really? Well, the bar, through the bar, there are about 130 lawyers that are registered, okay. um, but that's in all walks. That's in, in corporations, you know, at the right. Kohler Company and various, you know, in-house counsel retired, and possibly, too. retired lawyers. So, I mean, private practice lawyers, I think there are maybe 50 or so. Okay. And of the 24 that I counted, not certainly not all of them are uh, in private practice. Okay. But, but we do, we do uh, digress a little bit, and, uh, and it is interesting. And uh, is the public willing to essentially hire women through elections to make important decisions? And I'm not sure the public is necessarily, is necessarily there. But every election is, is, is unique. It depends on who's running and what the issues are and, and, and so forth. So, uh, well, wasn't the primary, weren't there three individuals and one of them, uh, um, um, the person who lost, wasn't he? Uh, wasn't he a he? It was a he, yeah. Was it it wasn't he, he a he? It was a he. <laughs> it was a he. <laughs> it was a male. So it was a male. So so Horton, here's a he. <laughs> yeah. So, well, yeah. and he wasn't even close. Wasn't even close. So, yeah. 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 Well, that we segue into Clifford because she was, she and this Mr. Summer were actually fairly close, and Annette Ziegler was way out in front. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Summer, um, I think, had some problems jumping into the race at a very, very late date. He's uh, currently, apparently, under investigation by the um, the Lawyers Ethics uh, Board of Professional Responsibility. That's not good. That's not good. You know, now when you're I'm going to start making, uh, yeah. No, I'm serious. Okay. I, that's not, you don't want that in a campaign. You really don't want that no. in a campaign, but that leads us to the, wow. the, the sort of the defining issue of this campaign, uh, the subject of a fairly scathing editorial, I thought, in the Sheboygan Press and other places about Judge Ziegler 
ruling in about 40 cases, more or less, in a, um, where her husband had what appears to be, I have not really investigated it, but a fairly clear uh, financial interest. Judges aren't supposed to do that. And, uh, and it's- He served on the board of directors. What's that? The husband served on the board of directors. Right. Of a bank. Of a bank. Mm -hmm. of a okay. Bank. What role does a judge have in trying to perceive of being totally objective? And so while there's no criminal activity involved here, um, we're talking about a lapse possibly of a good judgment. When, when does somebody say they ought not to be, or at least go to the administrative judge in a district and say, here's my situation. Do you think I ought to, do you ought to maybe replace me on this case? But when you don't do anything, I think there's a judgmental thing here that's a valid, can't be an issue. Oh, I think it's extremely valid. I, I, you just need to distance yourself because while we expect politicians and legislators to take money, we really, really do not expect judges to rule in cases where their family may have a direct financial interest. I mean, it's, at least to me, it's, it's a um, transparently clear conflict of interest. And I understand some of the cases were sort of small claim default things where, where Judge Ziegler didn't really have any involvement in the case, but certainly not all of them. And um, so I, I think it's interesting. I think it is a proverbial um, uh, life preserver thrown to the Clifford campaign because I think uh, prior to Clifford that- Clifford campaign dug it up, so that's, they're looking for issues against uh, Annette Ziegler. So yeah. they tried to find one. Yeah. So they, Actually, I think newspapers did, wasn't that newspaper reporters who, who, uh, who discovered that, and um, um, it's... Uh, it came out of Madison, the Madison Press, no, where, yeah. the, you know, who, who tipped them off oh, is yeah, a whole other yeah. story. I mean, I don't know where exactly where they were. So, Tom, you there. don't think it's a problem? I, had, I don't think it's a problem. I think mm -hmm. it's... Uh, much ado about nothing? Much ado about nothing, and they're trying to make it a big issue. Mm -hmm. And for some, people are buying it as a big issue. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, Judge Ziegler always also has the problem of... Um, having accepted campaign contributions and uh, above the above the limits. We'll talk a little bit about that with Governor Doyle and, and mm. his continuing uh, uh, campaign finance blues. But uh, I, think, um, I think it's interesting and it has breathed some life into a campaign yeah. that I would have said after the primary was completely, completely mm. dead in the water. I think Ziegler, Judge Ziegler thought she was just on her way to, you know, being anointed the new Supreme Court justice, and uh, it'll be it'll be interesting just to see how it plays out. I, uh, I think the editorial board, uh, uh, how they come out in the next week or so, are going to be important because I don't think Clifford's going to have the money the, anywhere near the money that Ziegler <coughs> has. I mean, yeah. the ads are at least four to one, at least from right. my watching the 10 o'clock news, it's yes. about four ads for Ziegler to one for Clifford. And I think Clifford's trying to take the issue of conflict of interest and, and, and run with it. And uh, Ziegler's saying, this is not illegal. Um, I didn't gain anything financially myself. It's not a big deal, as Tom is, is his point of view. And I think it's going to be a matter of two things then. Are the voters going to buy that? And then secondly, are the voters yeah. gonna, you know, going to take a view that uh, mm -hmm. these ads are are sufficient to its sort of anoint her. I mean, there was a poll, and we mentioned this off the air, that uh, I think 11% of the people in a recent uh, poll of people's perception of the Supreme Court was that she was already seated on, oh. seated on the bench. Well, you know, that shows the effect of the 30-second ad. If it's just a repetition of the name and, and the frequency of the ad, that's going to be a very strong determining factor. But if, again, people are listening to, say, editorial board commentary or they have a sense that maybe she should have uh, stepped down in some of these cases, maybe Clifford's got that uh, hope but right now, I mean, it looks that the, the money from WMC and others who are financing independent ads are really putting her name out there in, in big time. There's a good amount of money coming from outside the state um, for the Ziegler campaign. I don't know, I don't know exactly where. Mm -hmm. at well, this it's point the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce is running money through WMC, the, probably. Yeah. I don't know where, I don't know if Linda. I think Linda's is almost all, or I don't know if she's receiving outside Wisconsin, outside the Wisconsin funds, mm -hmm. but she's certainly working hard. But you're right, there's all sorts, it it's basically boils down to name recognition, and you're absolutely right. I have talked to people who really do think she's on the, the bench already because she's called judge. 
I wonder if they call when I point to, you know, when I point out that you call a member of the Supreme Court of Wisconsin a justice, and she's not <laughs> on the court yet. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other problem is that most people still don't have a sense, don't have any sense of what the Supreme Court really does in Wisconsin. They don't hold trials, so being a trial judge isn't necessarily that great an advantage over perhaps a lawyer who doesn't have that sort of you know gavel experience. And talking about being tough on crime, I don't know how that translates to the kind of cases the Wisconsin court really, really hears. They don't sentence people. Um, they very rarely, we don't have the death penalty, so they don't really have too many times to establish, you know, Eighth Amendment kinds of claims. So. Well, this gets back to, I don't know. particularly for the judicial system, um, where you really do want your judges not only to look independent, but to actually be independent of, of political, of political influence through money, is to look at public financing of Supreme Court races, if nothing else. For us to be spending millions mm -hmm. and millions of dollars, uh, I mean, I think the estimate is going to be, you know, more than $2 million on this race. WMC has already spent way in excess of 400000 in independent ads for Ziegler. This is crazy. Yeah. Um, you know, is this the best, you know, the best money that, uh, best judge that money can buy or justice that money can buy? Uh, why not spend a little bit of public money at least for a Supreme Court race? I'm not even going to get near the Court of Appeals or trial court races or whatever. Well, it's supposed to be nonpartisan. And when we start getting into these interest groups, we start injecting, yeah. I think, right. uh, an aspect of labor management and Democrat, Republican that, yeah, I remember that we ought not to have. last time where we, who endorsed who? Well, who's endorsing one mm -hmm. candidate? Who's endorsing the yeah, other who? candidate? And it's always party split. Yeah. So it does become partisan, yeah. even though it's not a partisan race. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. I think there, it, there's, as close as these races seem, there still is a lot of time, uh, as we mentioned in our other show, when the wheels come off at the, in the last two weeks of a campaign and people are just, you know, I think of Calvin and Hobbes careening down the hill in, in their <laughs> sled and away you go. And, and just because things are moving so quickly, you a really... Tree comes in the way. Don't you? I mean... <laughs> desperate times call for desperate At a certain point in the campaign, you realize you're going to have to do something that you probably would yeah. prefer not to do. It gets pretty distasteful, I imagine. Yeah, but, but even the best managed campaign uh, at the very end, things things get a little raggedy. So, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, well, we're going to go back to um, our, our not only our uh, current governor, but uh, the um, uh, the uh, uh, person who uh, lost the election. Uh, Mark Green has reached a deal with the elections board. As you remember, Mark was um, uh, Mr. Green was not allowed to use four hundred and sixty-seven thousand, more or less. Uh, in his campaign because it had been imported from um, his congressional campaign. The elections board ruled he couldn't use the money. He has that now before the state Supreme Court. And recently he and his lawyers uh, reached an agreement with the elections board, which was approved on a seven to two vote, that Mr. Green, apparently for dropping his lawsuit, will be able to use that $467,000 for three things. One, to contribute to other campaigns, so you can become everybody, everybody's most favorite loser uh, to charities, which is typically when you close out a campaign account, you give your money to charity or to pay legal fees. Now, I know you guys are going to be mean to me on this, but I've always said that <laughs> there's no better way to spend money than on attorney fees, you know, by and large. And, well, I think uh, it's Green's attorneys drew, <laughs> you know, drew up the agreement. So, you know, that's excellent. That's right. Is that a conflict of interest? No, is that a conflict of interest? Is it or isn't it? I don't know. No, that's good lawyering. Mm. But, I mean, uh, and, but, and Green himself is a lawyer, so I'm yeah. sure he, I mean, uh, now, are, are we clear that he can't pay himself? Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But it, know. it uh, to me, it's 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 interesting <laughs> that. Um, um, well, I'm uh, sure through all of this, he's gotten a number of bills from his attorneys, mm -hmm. and he knows the meter oh, sure. has been running, and it's not mm -hmm. been very sure. slow. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and it's it's great. actually been interesting. It would have been a very interesting decision, from my perspective, to have had from the court. Um, can you do this? Can you? you know, gather all this money from, you know, around the world for your congressional race and then decide to use it if you're going to run for a gubernatorial spot or whatever it is that you want to do. And I think, I think it's an interesting legal question and presumably will now not be decided. Now, Governor Doyle. The fun never stops on the campaign wagon for uh, Governor Doyle, who I personally have uh, 
had respect for and, and um, but the, the, tell me how to pronounce it, the Troja family? Troja? Troja I mean, they're a well-known yeah. family. I read about them in Kenosha. Well, Very, uh, it appears uh, that he and his family in one permutation or another have given over $200,000 yes. to the Doyle campaign. Oh, yeah. Have we reached the point where Jim Doyle has gotten better at this than Tommy Thompson? <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I did that. not think well, that was, was possible. I was thinking it. I was thinking it. I said it came from the playbook of, of, of the previous governor, and yeah. he's getting really good at it. Just yeah. for inflation. <laughs> yeah, maybe not then, but he's getting there. He's getting there. I remember Harold Ickes being called on the carpet. Uh, by a congressional campaign that was, or committee that was investigating the, the Clinton fundraising machine and Mr. Ick is saying to the senator, don't you realize that we learned all of this from Ronald Reagan? <laughs> but uh, in any event... Um, and some transportation legislation favorable to his company mm -hmm. and yeah. everything else. I mean, that was now congressional rather than mm -hmm. state, but... He's apparently a good player in the political system. And interestingly enough, has given uh, he's an um, a, uh, equal opportunity giver. He's given to Republicans and Democrats, yeah. and it's hard to know just where his, um, where his uh, loyalties lie. But It's harder to say than Abra Abramoff or something. Jack <laughs> Abramoff, <laughs> yeah. Abramoff, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting. I, I, you just wonder how much longer all of this can continue. I, I don't know. I... Um, I well, have also he's uh, been a contributor to the various agencies or uh, charitable organizations in Kenosha, and they've got things. Do they have something named after him? I think. Oh I mean, yes, I'm sure they do. Yeah. So and then he's we have well-known individual in the area. And then the Department of Transportation Secretary um, <laughs> loses. The there are, somehow records. his uh, his uh, <laughs> calendar disappears for for two years, but has now miraculously been found. It was lost, Thank but goodness. now it's found, Thank and we goodness. can start singing Amazing Grace. Now okay. we know where Rosemary Woods were. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we just cynical oh, sitting no, around no, no. here? But I'm afraid our political system... It breeds it. It really sure, does. It it's, really does. It stretches it's, credibility after yeah. a while. You keep hearing the same well, when, stories. We've talked about this before. When you sure. raise the double-digit millions to yeah. run a campaign, exactly. you're going to eventually have people who interact with the state frequently and give frequently, and then you can always have to hold your nose and say, did this contact or that contact get, you know, a decision made, was it based on the finances or based on the merits? And I would say once you divest from the political contribution end of it, then you can start looking at the merits, but the other one is always going to be there as a suspect. It just, it just doesn't make much sense to me that, um, that we can't do something. Well, the well, alternative... Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, that's kind of a silly well, comment on my part, but... you've got a Democratic governor and you've got a Dem at least a Democratic uh, Senate. Where are they going? You know, they passed the original bill right away in the beginning of the legislature, and where are we going now? Are they going to cut their hands off, though? I don't... I mean, the well, hand that's always out? I mean, I... Well, I think that's the that's the you know the Democrats in Congress are facing the same thing where there was a lot of brouhaha about how we're going to reform the system, and they made a couple of cosmetic changes and made it a little tougher for a state for an aide to get a steak dinner, I guess. But other than that, it's they're they're just rolling in the dough just like Tom Delay did, the unrepentant Tom Delay, I might add. So. So if you're going to go down, you might as well be unrepentant. Well, nobody so, has the know, courage. I mean, to, nobody uh, has the courage to say now that we have power. You know, perhaps we should do something constructive with that power. Now that we've got power, we're going to play the same game as the other fellows until such a point that we get so disgusted we throw the other bums out to put the new bums in. So, well, there's very few people who are yeah. willing to say we need to raise money from the public yeah. to finance <laughs> campaigns, and so they they yeah. are afraid to say we need five or ten dollar or twenty dollar check off of mm -hmm. some type uh, and a limit on spending uh, to go forward. Nobody is willing to to do that yeah. until we have an alternative funding mechanism where there's substantial money so it works, um, nobody does anything but, uh, but the but status quo. I mean, the limit on spending is by the candidate, right? I mean, how can you put limits on all those uh, political parties, uh, not parties, but political uh, action committees and mm -hmm. interested groups from spending? I mean, we could, we could, but we they a, want to spend. We have a Supreme Court that says that money equals free speech, and until that decision, unless there's public finance, right? 
unless there unless we why not do a system where there is a real campaign for a short period of time I know this is so high in the sky but just indulge my fantasy here uh, where people are actually required to talk about the issues and where the public media needs to dis needs to broadcast in-depth discussions regarding the issues that face us. I know, yeah. you're, well, getting, you're getting all misty-eyed about it. Because all, the channels belong to the public. They always belong to the public, and they're supposed to be serving the public. There isn't any reason why you can't, or, you know, you can't set up a system where you say, you are going to carry this rather than, you know, the 17th round of Seinfeld reruns, yeah. as much as I like watching well, You know, a little, this is, a, this is stretching it a little bit, but the presidential election used to have New Hampshire. Yeah. It's now going to be usurped by primaries in California, Florida, New York. It, we're not going to have the discussion. They used to have political, good political mm -hmm. discussions in the state of New Hampshire. Yep. And, Grip and grin. Yeah. yeah. And now and they're going to be uh, swallowed up under media kinds of barrages for primaries. And on primaries. those silly 30-second TV ads mm -hmm. that dumb down the population, that obfuscate the real issues, um, and it is not morning in America, no. uh, and uh, so yeah. I'm reading new, Joe Klein's new book on on um, political consultants and how it has changed since since 1980 essentially, and the role of the political consultant is pretty interesting stuff. But let's go to free speech. Just a, another permutation. Um, I have on my internet a, a legislative service bills that come up that are of interest, and and we know that there's a. Um, um, uh, public access uh, television bill coming up that we'll discuss in, in, in our next show, but um, a few legislators have introduced, and I think this is fascinating, a bill to prohibit uh, advertising for prescription drugs. And I have no idea, I'm sure this will have a very short life, but essentially it prohibits advertising for um, uh, prescription drugs with the view that um, this, the legislator, legislature finds that this is um, undermining health care, um, that it is increasing costs, um, that the um, advertising is inherently misleading. What do you think? Well, first of all, I would, I'm surprised it's a state matter. I would think that this would be, with the television waves crossing state lines, this would be an FCC matter and a, a national matter. Uh, so I'm, I'm surprised jurisdictionally that... Well, sometimes it bubbles up. I suppose. Um, do I need to see a lot of Viagra commercials on television? I, frankly, not. Um, and a lot of other uh, prescription drugs. Uh, I, think it's a good I always idea. kind of rely. I always. Yeah, I, I guess maybe I'm a little bit naive in thinking that if I present them, as they say, I love that word "present." The medical community says when you present a set of uh, symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. He presented at the emergency room with <laughs> vomiting. Um, I would think my, my doctor would, would at least have the expertise to tell me which drugs would be appropriate yeah, at which time. Right. Um, the Sheboygan Area know, School District, though, finds, at least it did when I was still on the school board, that the um, utilization patterns for prescription oh, yeah. drugs were extremely high in the, I shouldn't say extremely, but they were high in the school district as against other comparative systems. And, well, that was, and, and, and I'm not saying that's a result yeah, of advertising, say, no, that's got but to do with that. it was essentially it was a free it was a free good, and any economist will tell you a free good. People are going to use a lot at that particular point. Um, under our, it's changed now, but it, it used to be that um, generic drugs were no charge to to us, and prescription drugs, uh, name drugs, yeah. were five dollars or some some real nominal amount of money. Now those have those deductibles have gone up, and, and there's not that, that incentive to just you know, use any prescription just for the ease and convenience of it. All right. One of the rationales for the bill is uh, what? Uh, undermines the health care system? I don't, I, tell me how it does advertising for prescription. Well, what advertising does is that it increases demand. I mean, that's why you advertise. Yeah. Well, <clears> they wouldn't be advertising the... because it's very costly. Well, it also undermines the professionalism that needs to be injected by a doctor or a practitioner in determining what's appropriate for that particular person. So I, Most saw it on, have, I saw it on TV. Oh, this is what go, I want. People go into a doctor's office and say, I saw on television this, this drug that cures my allergy problems. I want that drug, as if they're picking off the shelf of a bar of soap or something, whereas the disclaimer under said you could die of 12, th 12 things if you take this drug. You know, maybe the doctor ought to be determined. Well, I was going to say, who. the doctor ought to say, no, it's 
So to say, well, that's uh, so why is the drug I, company spending all this money that you're paying for through higher drug costs to influence this person to go to their doctor to ask for this drug? Maybe this would be a way to, to reduce health insurance costs. It's interesting, and but it, I, was, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's clearly what's uh, the, it's, you know what's the interplay here? Yeah, that it's, leads to this sometimes deal. I wonder if it's just a, a liability <laughs> protection for some people. I mean, you know, a, a doctor will give the drug, or the uh, patient asks for it, right. and therefore they die from it, and they say, "Well, this person really wanted it," and and uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The other than, other than giving a strong arm to your doctor, what right. the heck uh, right. importance is this ad on television? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that the particularly the sleeping aids and indigestion stuff, I think, are heavily, 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 heavily advertised. I don't watch a whole lot of TV, but I can see a lot of in the you know half an hour a day I might spend on it. I can see a Lunesta commercial you know three or four times, mm -hmm. and. Um, Nexium, the purple pill, right. is that indigestion? Prilosec. Yeah, and so you, whoops, you can see those, you know, over and over again. And um, so I just, I just happened That's to see this on my, pill. and and uh, um, I, uh, and of course I think it's primarily, um, uh, primarily. Uh, Television relating to the Democrats. Gives you indigestion and keeps you up at night. <laughs> Therefore, we should have yeah, yeah. Well, maybe this will go the way of, uh, you know, we used to have uh, smoking uh, ads on TV and radio, mm -hmm. and they're now gone. Maybe this exactly. is another way to exactly. uh, disappear. Yeah. 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 So, money isn't necessarily free speech, I guess, is I'm just tying this to in my oh, okay. very lunatical way, in my lunesta way to, uh, to, uh, Shortening campaigns for uh, political office and one thing. <laughs> okay. I okay. Think he's that's suggesting you watch this show if you, if you fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a stretch. That's not helpful. Well, um, and the the last thing I wanted to talk about, and I did find this on, um, and it was just a tiny little article, and I don't know if I can even find it, but I thought, hurrah, hurrah, um, Tommy Colon, I'll win the August 11th Iowa. Straw poll. Tommy well, Who. Hey, Tommy Who. Because people know who he is. Tommy yeah. James and the Shandell. I mean, who, Tommy Who. <laughs> it's it's quintessential <laughs> Tommy. He. Um, if you he, don't have buzz, create your own buzz. He said this will put his name at the head of the list of GOP hopefuls. No. Uh, we're gearing for that, Thompson told reporters before making a fundraising pitch for his still undeclared campaign <laughs> at a Madison law firm. It looks very good. In Iowa, he said, I'm doing more things better organizationally than any other candidate. It's tough leading the limelight. Some do it gracefully and Please. some not. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's all but he wants, No, that. but he just wants to get back sure. in the limelight sure. for a short period of time, which is fine. Yeah. Don't forget Tommy Thompson. And um, it, and then just one other one other thing he says, and, and this is the thing you got to love about Tommy. Um, he said the firing of eight federal prosecutors probably should not have happened, and uh, so I uh, I just thought uh, I thought that was interesting, and yeah. and it'll be uh, so Tommy Thompson versus Mitt Romney, Rudy Giuliani, John McCain, uh, John McCain, maybe Fred Thompson. Yeah, and, and we get yeah, Fred back, back in it, but in any uh, event. In any, he isn't in any of those leagues, yeah. not even close. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Well, it'll be interesting to see how we Any more than his brother could have won the governorship. <laughs> how we go, but thanks for joining us and hope you enjoyed our conversation. Yeah.